TB118 Safe Electrical Isolation of Gas Appliances. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video we've got a special guest. We've got Andrew from Socket and C and Andrew's going to go over the new technical bulletin TB118 and he's going to go over, he's going to show us how to how to do our, our safe isolation checks. Um, also now with the new ACS, this is going to be included in the ACS as well. So we do need to know how to work safely on boilers. Um, so yeah, I'll pass you over to Andrew now. Thanks very much for that Alan. Andrew here from Socket and C. And in this series of videos, we're going to be looking at how easy it is to comply with Gas Safe Technical Bulletin 118 as long as you've got a little bit of know-how in the right equipment. Obviously Technical Bulletin 118 covers all the essential electrical checks that a gas engineer will have to carry out when servicing a boiler. The first test we'll carry out is the Safe to Touch test. For this test we're going to be using the Socket and C SP400 proving unit and the Socket and C VVD Pro non-contact voltage detector. The first thing we need to do is prove that the non-contact contact voltage detector works. Then we do a, a quick sweep of the boiler, checking the boiler chassis and any extraneous metal work. Once we've done the check, we prove that the non-contact voltage detector works and we're confident that we've completed the extraneous metal work checks. Now I've done the safe to touch test, I know that I can touch the boiler. Next is the uh, essential electrical checks and I need to access the boiler terminals for this. So I've removed the two retaining screws from the front of the boiler, just pop that off. Um, I have switched the boiler off while I access these terminals, so I'll just drop the front. Remove the two re retaining screws on this insulating panel. Retain them for re reassembly of the boiler. And lift this, and we've got access to the terminals. To do the essential electrical checks, I'm going to be using the Socket and C DLM Pro. I can use the magnetic strap to hold it in place on the boiler. I'll then connect the earth, ensuring a nice clean connection. That's very important for the testing. I'll then connect the neutral and the live and then I'll switch the DLM Pro to the socket position before re-energising the boiler. That gives me my polarity checks and my incoming voltage checks. If any of those aren't right the DLM Pro won't allow an earth loop impedance test. Then simply switch to the loop position. It does a no trip loop test so it shouldn't trip the RCD in a healthy installation. Gives me an earth loop impedance reading right back from the transformer to the chassis of the boiler of 0.3 ohms and that's a good indication on the meter. Then disconnection, remove the live, remove the neutral, remove the earth and that's the essential electrical checks completed on the boiler. Now I've done the essential electrical checks, I'm going to safely isolate the boiler so I can do the servicing on it while it's dead. I've removed the fuse from the fuse spare, I'm going to keep that safe, retain that myself. There are multiple locking off devices that can be used on fuse spares or plug tops. For instance the Socket and C Log 10. Because I'm totally in control of the boiler I won't be fitting that. Maybe if I was going to the van to get some tools then I would fit that device. Now I've removed the fuse, I can assume that it's uh, safely isolated, but I must prove that it's safely isolated. To prove safe isolation, I'm going to be using the Socket and C SP400 proving unit and the Socket and C VIP150 two pole tester. The first thing we must do is use the SP400 to prove that the two pole tester works correctly. Once I've proved that throughout the entire range, I can do the checks on the boiler terminals. I'll be checking from earth to live, connecting to the earth first. From neutral to live, 
connecting to the neutral first and finally from earth to neutral and we mustn't have any indication during any of these checks again we can assume that the boiler is safely isolated but we've got to prove operation of the VIP 150 again yeah I've proved that operates throughout its entire range we're safe to continue with our power off checks we've run through the entire TV118 process now and you've seen how easy it is to comply as long as you've got the right information and the right test equipment we're now going to take a closer look at the equipment that we use to carry out the process starting with the socket and C VVD Pro it's a non-contact voltage detector that operates from 50 to 1000 volts and it's ideal for carrying out checks on extraneous metalwork such as boiler chassis, radiators, pipes and taps just to see if there's any voltage present if it doesn't give an indication you know it's then safe to touch it clearly indicates a voltage present by the LED in the tip glowing red and the main tester of the body vibrating. When we carried out our essential electrical tests, we used the Socket and C DLM Pro. This test has been specifically designed for the gas engineer. Um, it's a combined socket tester, earth loop impedance tester, and multimeter. Um, so the socket and loop test have got blue indications, and that indicates that they're used with the blue terminals on the top of the unit. The multimeter have uh, yellow selections on the rotary dial and that indicates that it's used with these two yellow terminals as well as giving a numerical value the loop impedance range gives a, a good check or fail indication um, obviously good indicates that everything's fine and then a check indication is anywhere between 1.8 and 93 ohms so this is where a gas engineer will need to interpret the earth arrangement of the property. So if there's a check indication, you'd start to think, is a TT earthing arrangement being used? And you'd have to look for things like an earth rod coming down from the meter point, or perhaps overhead lines supplying the property, which are obvious indications of a TT earthing arrangement. The multimeter side, we've kept it nice and simple. So you've got your AC volts, your DC volts, and continuity for doing your resistance checks and then an auto null feature which takes into account the resistance of the test leads so you've got extra accuracy there it doesn't matter what you select on your multimeter if ever there's a voltage present it's fully protected and it'll give you a good clear indication that there's a voltage there um, it comes with a magnetic fob so you can attach it to the boiler chassis and then it comes with compliant test leads so all of the metal on the clips is uh, insulated so you're not going to hurt yourself and the exposed tips on the prods are all compliant the cables are uh, hard wearing in silicon and they're also wear indicating so if you see any white coming through on the black you know it's time to uh, to replace the cables the last part of the technical bulletin 118 process we looked at was the safe isolation process. For this we use the Socket and C SP400 proving unit. It's a true AC output proving unit from 50 to 690 volts. Runs off six AA batteries and it can be used for proving our non-contact voltage indicators and two pole testers. Of course it's best practice whenever using a voltage indicator to prove it before and after use. It can be used while it's still in the case. Simply put the tester in the terminals and check its indication throughout its entire range. The VIP 152 pole test it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, no selections to make, no leads to change, it's all one fixed unit. No batteries were required and it's purely a safe isolation piece of equipment. So obviously we do all the checks and check that there's no indication given. We're now going to look at other testers in the socket and C range that will help gas engineers to comply with technical bulletin 118. Now we're going to be looking at the socket and C PDL234. This is our entry level earth loop impedance tester. 
um, to do the essential electrical checks as part of your technical bulletin 118 procedure. If we look in the case, we've got the tester itself and then a 13 amp test lead for checking at ring mains, but it also comes with your flying test leads for checking at boiler terminals. For this demonstration, I'm just going to plug straight into the 13 amp socket. As soon as we power the unit on, it does our socket test and tells us what voltage we have uh, present at the socket. Then simply press the loop test. It will perform a no trip low current test and then give us a go no go indication. So in this case we less than 1 ohm the earth loop impedance and we're happy that it's a good result. It also has a polarity test pad so simply hold your thumb over there and if everything's okay with the meter supplies terminals into the installation we'll get three greens indicated and it's as simple as that. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch the video on socket and C and technical bulletin 118. If you've got any questions please comment in the box below. For more information on the product range you can see everything at www.socketandc.co.uk Thank you very much for that Andrew. If you've got any questions please ask them in the comments below and if, you, if you'd like any more videos like this or anything more in depth to do with what you need to do with TB118 then again please put some comments below and we'll try and cover, we'll try and cover them as well if, if possible. Thank you for watching.